Here I want to show you guys a quick trick to skip the integration by parts on a classic calculus 2 integral. And so what we want to look at is the indefinite integral of e to the ax times cosine of bx, where a and b are non-zero real numbers. So like I said, generally you would use integration by parts on this. You would maybe let u equal to e to the ax and then dv would be cosine bx dx, and you would have to loop through integration by parts twice until you created an equation involving your goal integral. And it's not really that difficult. It's a good exercise in integration by parts, but it takes a long time. Like it would maybe take this whole chalkboard or maybe a chalkboard and a half. But what we're gonna do is a lot quicker, and it's gonna use two facts. One of them is called Euler's formula, and it says that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And you can like prove this using a Taylor series, but this is a pretty commonly known formula. And another one, which comes from calculus two, is just the antiderivative of an exponential function. And that is the antiderivative of e to the alpha x dx is equal to one over alpha e to the alpha x of course, plus a constant because we have an indefinite integral or an antiderivative. Okay, so let's get to this. So the first thing that I wanna do is add something to the integrand so it looks a little bit more like this. So I'm gonna replace this with the integral of e to the ax times the quantity cosine bx plus i sine bx dx. But of course I've changed the integral in this case and I've changed it by adding e to the ax times i sine bx. And so that's a problem, but we can get rid of that by saying that we wanna just take the real part of this. So I'll just put an re in big parentheses around everything and that means that I'm taking the real part of this expression. And now this would be a problem if a and b were non-real numbers or if x was a non-real variable, in other words, a complex variable. But in our case, we're assuming that a and b are non-zero real numbers and x is a real variable. So the only imaginary thing that popping up in here is this i attached to the sine bx. Okay, great. So now what I can do is take this cosine bx plus i sine bx and rewrite it with Euler's formula. So notice this guy is just e to the i times bx. Good. But now I can use exponent rules to mash these two things together, this e to the ax and e to the i bx. So remember, if you multiply two things with the same base, you just add the exponents. So that's gonna give me the real part of the antiderivative of e to the a plus i b times x dx, good. Okay, fantastic. Now what I wanna do is use this rule over here. So in other words, I take the antiderivative of e to the alpha x, I get one over alpha e to the alpha x plus a constant. So let's see what we do if we get that. So that's gonna give us this real part of one over a plus b i um, times e to the a plus b i times x plus a constant c. Good. So generally, we don't wanna keep complex numbers in the denominator, so we can get rid of the complex number from the denominator by multiplying by something called the conjugate. So this should look familiar from maybe the radical conjugate when solving limit problems from calculus one. So here I'm gonna multiply by a minus bi in the numerator and the denominator. Great, and notice that doesn't change anything because I've multiplied by one, but that will have the effect of turning this denominator into a real number. Okay, so notice that's gonna give me this real part of a minus bi over, so let's see what we get here. We get a times a, which is a squared. Then we get b times i times minus b times i. So that's gonna be minus b times i squared. Um, and then i squared is negative one, so that gives us plus b squared, and then the cross terms cancel, because we have one a plus b i, and then a minus one a plus b i, so those are gonna cancel. Okay, good. And now what I wanna do is split this guy up using our exponential rules that we use to combine this together. And so first I'll bring an e to the ax out. Good, so just to reiterate what I'm doing here, taking this guy right here and I wrote it as e to the ax times e to the i times bx. 
and now I'll re-expand that e to the i bx. So notice that's gonna give me the same thing up here. So I got cosine bx plus i sine bx, and then plus my constant. Okay, good. So now what I wanna do is take this complex number, a minus bi, and then this expression that involves a complex number i and combine them. And so in other words, I wanna foil this out. And so that's gonna give me this real part. I have one over a squared plus b squared out front of everything. I'll put an e to the ax out front of everything. And now I wanna zero in on the real part and the imaginary part. So notice I'll get a real part for multiplying a with cosine bx and with negative bi with i sine bx. So let's see that. So we'll have a times cos bx. And then here we've got minus i times i, so that cancels out to a plus. And so that's gonna give us plus b times sine bx. So like I said, that's the real part. We only want the real part, so that's all we really want. But just for completeness, let's look at the imaginary part as well. So we'll, we will get the imaginary part by taking this bi and multiplying this cosine and this a and multiplying this i sine. So let's see what we get for that. So we have plus i times the quantity. So maybe the first one we'll have is a times sine bx. And then the next one will have negative b times cosine bx. And then finally plus a constant. So now all we have to do is extract the real part from this. So again, we're considering A, B as being real constants, C is a real constant, and X is a real variable. So the only thing that's an imaginary in this whole setup is whatever is multiplied by this I that we're using as a tool. So that means if we take the real part of that, this part is going to cancel. And that leaves us with, let's see what we have. We have E to the AX, times a cos bx plus b sine bx all over a squared plus b squared and then plus a constant. And that's our final answer. And that's a bit quicker than doing the integration by parts twice and then solving. Okay, so maybe give it a go on your own with e to the ax sine bx, or maybe you could play around with some other similar integrals that are difficult using integration by parts from calculus two, but are made simpler using this technique. And that's a good place to stop.